After 17 years as a professional speaker, I remember a moment in time where I started to lose my passion, lose my drive, and I never even thought that was possible. And it happened when I turned 40. When I turned 40, I had developed this, this brand of being an anti-bully speaker, where I hated why they were booking me, but I was grateful that I was the one being picked. Because schools would call me when someone would commit suicide. They would say, Kevin, can you come and bring our school and bring our community back together? But I was also grateful that they were picking me because I got the opportunity to do meaningful work during those times. But I got to a place to where I felt that what I was leaving was residue. Meaning, I'd go to a school, set up the assembly, do my PowerPoint presentation, deliver a message, hopefully a heartfelt message. I would shake the principal's hand or the activity director's hand. I'd take some pictures with the kids. I'd get in my car, I'd go to the next school. I'd set up my PowerPoint, get all the kids in the, in the gymnasium. I would deliver my message, hopefully a heartfelt message. I would shake the principal's hand or the activities director's hand. I'd get in my car and go to the next school. Were people motivated when I left? I hope so. Was I making a difference? I hope so. But there was something in me that felt that I could do more. I didn't feel like I was living up to my full potential. I felt like I could make even more of a change, but I just didn't know how. Until the day I was sitting at the dinner table, my family, my mother-in-law, my mother-in-law Susie, she's the type of person that when you go over her house to, to eat dinner, she never sits down. She's always running around making sure everybody has what they need. It's like, Mom, we have everything that we need. You can have a seat now, Mom, we're good. I remember one day going over there. We were about to eat and, and, and Mom got up to get her plate and as she was coming back to sit down, she looked at me and she says, Kev, you're doing a great job in those schools. I said, oh, Mom, thanks, Mom. Now, she didn't know what was going on inside of me. She didn't know that I was a little depressed and down because I felt like I could be doing more and I just didn't know how. She goes, you're doing a great job in those schools, Kev. I said, thanks, Mom. She said, each one reach one. I said, wait a minute, what did you say? She said, each one reach one. I said, Mom, that's it. I said, that's exactly it. That's exactly what I need. She goes, what are you talking about? She had no idea that she had just changed the trajectory of my vision, of my business. She had just galvanized me for the work that I get an opportunity to do every day. So the very next day I had an assembly. At the end of that assembly, I had everybody put their ones up in the air. Put their ones up in the air and I said, repeat this after me. Each one, each one, reach one, reach one, each one, each one, reach one, reach one. They started chanting it and I was like, this is awesome. This is what I needed. This just gave me the energy that I needed to keep moving on. Well, all we were doing was chanting. There's nothing that much different about the assembly except for the chant at the end. But the very next day, I was privileged to do another anti-bullying assembly at my alma mater, Mesa Verde High School. Did the same thing at the end of the assembly. Put your ones up, they threw their ones up. Repeat this after me, each one, each one, reach one, reach one. We're chanting it again, it was music to my ears. Well, on this day, all there was a many students that came up because I graduated from there. So it was a different type of connection. It seemed like every student in the building came up. Students were coming up, students were coming up, we we're taking pictures, it was awesome. But there was one lady that stayed until every student left the building, left the gymnasium. She came over to me. Her name's Renee. Renee Mello, that is. She looks at me in my eyes, she said, Kevin, we need your program. I said, what program? She goes, the, the each one, the each one reach one program. Oh, oh, oh Renee, that's not, that's not a program, it's just a chant. She goes, no, no, no. We need your program. And at that moment, I realized I could actually go from leaving residue to leaving residual systemic change across the climate and culture of school campuses by going from doing an assembly to creating a program. After that day, literally, I got busy. 
I called my wife, I called my son, I called my daughter, I called friends. And then I ended up calling a very special person who turned out to be my assistant coach in creating a program called the Reach One Alliance, where we go on to campuses and we shift the culture of campuses, not just through one assembly, but through multiple visits on that campus, strategically planting a club on that campus. Well, we started off in one school. Went from one schools to two schools, from two schools to three schools, from three schools to four schools, from four schools to many, many schools across the Sacramento region and beyond, and even in other states. Well, today, I feel grateful. I feel privileged to be able to do work that matters, work that goes beyond residue, work that's leaving residual systemic change. I know in the world that we live today, there are many people that want to change the world. Well, in this video, I want to challenge you to look beyond just how I can make superficial change. I can go give a motivational message or create a nonprofit. How can you leave residual systemic change that's gonna last beyond your lifetime? Friends, there's greatness in you. I didn't think it was possible for me to do it, but I feel so, when I go to sleep at night, I feel so grateful for the work that I get to do because when my time is up on this earth, the Reach One Alliance and the message of each one, Reach One Every Day, it will live on beyond my lifetime. You have the power to make a difference beyond just residue. Will you take the challenge? Embrace yourself. Embrace mode. Embrace seeing.